Hey guys, this is Gunter from LRTimelapse.com. Today I'm proud to present you the new version 1.7 of uh, LR Timelapse. I'll take the occasion to make a brand new tutorial video uh, for all of you that uh, are beginners with LR Timelapse. This tutorial will show you how to get started and uh, get the first good uh, time lapse results in editing with LR Timelapse and in this case uh, with uh, Lightroom. Okay, let's get started. Um, this is the user interface of LR Timelapse. You probably might have seen it before. Here you have a folder chooser and the first thing I want to do is to uh, open up a folder with the time-lapse sequence I shot in uh, Tenerife. And you can see it's loading the preview files and here are my file names and um, everything else in this table is pretty empty with height is not set, date time is not set, exposure is not set. Um, the reason is uh, this is a sequence that has not been edited before so no XMP metadata is associated to that images. I recommend you put every single sequence into one folder that's uh, very important and you start your workflow with uh, version images inside of LR Timelapse. And then you will get this dialog here, should LR Timelapse initialize your XMP metadata. It's important that you say yes here and LR Timelapse is going to initialize every single perimeter um, you will be able to edit later in Lightroom. Now we have the file names with 8 set, date time, original exposure and we have a bunch of other parameters as well. I'm going to untick this checkbox hide unchanged columns so it will uh, show me all parameters we have here. It's a crop, we have uh, white balance, recovery, fill light, black tones, brightness, contrast, everything. This is basically all uh, sliders you see in the develop module. Okay, let's uh, hide the unchanged properties again and uh, what we can do now is we can have a look at our time-lapse sequence so you can increase the size by dragging uh, this uh, slider here and now we can play the video and you see I took it from a slider it's a sequence uh, I made in Tenerife uh, for my video Canary Skies you might have watched it and you see we start uh, at sunset and it's getting darker and darker um, until the, the images get pretty pretty dark here uh, at the end. And I'm going to show you how to recover this uh, underexposed parts here. So what I'm going to do first is I will decide at which places I'm going to edit this sequence. I suggest we uh, edit it at the beginning, we edit it at the end, and uh, in the middle. I'm going to set a keyframe to uh, for me to remember which position to edit later. And you might notice that LR Timelapse set one keyframe at the beginning and one at the end automatically. So you can see that little diamonds here that signalize these are keyframes. So I'm basically that's it what I do in this step. So I'm going to hit save to save all uh, metadata, so this is XMP files here that will serve me as communicators uh, with uh, Lightroom. And now I head over to Lightroom. Here I open the same sequence and what I'm going to do now is metadata, read metadata from files. And what's going to happen now is that Lightroom reads in my initialized uh, XMP files and will initialize every perimeter inside Lightroom as well. And you can easily see we have got uh, one star rating here for the first image. And if I go to the last image you see one star rating as well and anywhere in the middle is the third keyframe that appears as uh, one star. I'm going to put a filter on these one star images so I can see my keyframes. And this one is still loading but you're going to see that every one of these images has an aspect ratio of 16 to 9. Um, first thing I can do is I can change uh, the 
position of my crop. I can um, make it smaller um, as I want. And that's my first editing step. I'm editing the first keyframe as you can see here. And uh, now I'm going to edit it like a normal uh, image. So I can uh, just uh, to make a white uh, balance adjustment. I can change exposure. And what I recommend is that you get rid of that uh, default black uh, value here, black's value. And um, we are going to use the um, tone curve instead. I'm going to uh, increase clarity a little bit, vibrance as well. And now I, I'm going into the tone curve to make a bit of a fine tuning um, to my to the contrasts of this uh, image. You can uh, as well use uh, this uh, gradient adjustments and you are going to see this the, here are two gradients predefined and you should use uh, those ones um, if you want to uh, fiddle around with the gradient adjustments because these two are going to be animated later on. Okay, so very rough edit and uh, I'm going back to the grid view with the G and now I'm going to copy all my edits here. That's uh, Control Shift C. Copy settings on the other monitor. Then I'm going to check all, copy all adjustments I made to the first image to the second one. With this uh, Control Shift and V. So you can easily see this is getting too dark. So I'm going to make it brighter. Can start with the exposure and change the the white balance as well to make it a little bit more dramatic. The sun is sinking here and it's giving me a bit of a, a more red appearance. Now I'm going back to uh, grid view and control C again, copy all settings, go to the last one, control V and uh, this one is uh, much too dark as well, so increase exposure more and this is getting the blue hour here um, and uh, now I can use my uh, gradient adjustment to increase the brightness in the lower part a little bit you will see that will get nicely animated later okay let's assume that's it and um, go back to our grid view and I can easily see that looks a lot better and now I select everything control A and then I say metadata uh, save metadata to files okay now we go back to LR time-lapse and hit once on reload and now you see our keyframes have somewhat changed. The exposure, the yellow line, uh, demarks the exposure value. That's the one that's shown here. This one is darker, this is brighter, this is much brighter. And the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Auto keyframes. And this is going to calculate a smooth transition between all these three keyframes. And if we have a look in our table, you can see it's not only the exposure that changed. So this updated everything a little bit, so you can only see the really changed uh, parameters here. The gradient uh, exposure and the position of our gradient changed as well. So basically that's it. We've done a transition. You obviously can not see any edits here because uh, LR Timelapse does not know how the um, resulting images uh, will look. But um, you can have a look at every single curve um, that we have uh, edited and that uh, a transition has been applied to. So now I'm going to save again everything successfully saved and if I go back to Lightroom now um, I will have to remove the filter 
to the one star and select everything in the grid and then right mouse metadata read metadata from files this is going to read in the metadata for every single file in the middle of the sequence to reflect our transition that we made and you can easily see that uh, the changed values are now being uh, propagated to all images and we've got a nice uh, smooth transition and I'm going to show you the the result later on. So this is in conclusion the way to make a first dull looking sequence that has been much too dark very appealing because you can animate every single developed slider from a Lightroom over the time in your time-lapse video. Now that we are done uh, editing the sequence the last thing you have to do is uh, export the video so we are going to the slideshow module and um, if you installed everything correctly in the user template section here you see the slideshow templates from LR Timelapse the instructions how to install them you'll find at lrtimelapse.com as well so normally you get the 15 and 30 and 25 and 24 FPS uh, with the free templates and there are uh, pro templates as well you can uh, purchase they provide more uh, frame rates and they provide more uh, video templates as well with higher resolutions higher bit rates and uh, more frame rates but the free ones should get you started as well so I'm going to select the LR Timelapse 30 FPS here and then make sure that all film strip photos is marked here and then go to export uh, video select uh, file name I'm going to put it on my desktop um, tutorial one and now you can choose the appropriate oh, let's see if you can see this a little bit better here uh, there uh, couple of um, templates for video exporting here as well and uh, I'm going to use the 30 FP FPS uh, pro template but you can go ahead with uh, any of the free templates as well so this one this bitrate here 30 FPS should match the bitrate you ch you've chosen um, in the slideshow module so I'm going to uh, use this one make a 720p video tutorial 1 save and wait until Lightroom has exported my video okay that's it thank you for watching the tutorial thank you for using LR timelapse and uh, please remember I put a lot of work into this um, so you uh, definitely help me if you buy the pro templates if you uh, make a donation uh, for alert time lapse and I would like to recommend my new ebook time lapse uh, shooting and uh, processing that covers the whole story from shooting perfect time lapses until the post processing with the Lightroom and LR time lapse and uh, After Effects and the other Adobe products if you own them so See you soon and um, have fun with our time lapse. Bye bye.